than this. This is Mother Nature. You cannot beat the fraction. On your retina, when you look at a light source, the image on your retina will look like this. It will look exactly what you saw there. That is what your retina will see. And if those two lights are too close together, your brains will say, sorry, I, I don't... Coming into the topic of this video for a while, and I really wanted to introduce the concepts of angular resolution, visual acuity, and diffraction as they apply to the horizon, so that these laws of physics, light, resolution, and perspective can be taken into account and hopefully further developed in order to better understand our Earth and also to help dispel some of the tired old myths of ships and buildings disappearing over the edge of a ball Earth. Now, mainstream science teaches us that the horizon is the edge of a ball Earth as it curves away from us because ships disappear bottom first when they sail over this edge. What's funny to me is that their argument of ships going over a ball Earth is just as silly as falling off the edge of a flat Earth. It is a very childish argument, especially in today's world where we can pull objects back into view with a telescope or zoom camera, not to mention the fact that if you ascend in altitude, you can clearly see that a ship or building is not over the curve of a ball, it was simply out of your view due to perspective and the angles of light propagation when you're at a lower elevation. From a higher vantage point, your eyes can clearly see that the water or land is completely flat. There is no curve or edge that boats are sailing over. Again, it is a silly assertion, yet it is one of the main pillars of the ball earth theory. In this video, I will introduce the concepts of angular resolution with a basic explanation and then I will show another short clip of MIT professor Dr. Walter Lewin in his Physics 3 course where he teaches these recognized laws of physics that we can test and observe. This is basically judo where we are using their own scientific admissions to form a logical explanation of why we observe what we observe and this in stark contrast to how groups such as NASA interpret the same observations. The survival of the ball earth theory necessarily relies on NASA images and other space claims otherwise their theory has only silly stories such as a spinning orbiting ball earth and non-existent curvature or the direction of toilets flushing and boats going over the edge of a ball, none of which is observed by the average individual. So to begin, what is angular resolution? Angular resolution describes the ability of any image forming device such as a telescope, microscope, camera, or the human eye to distinguish small details of an object. It is the minimum angle needed so that an instrument can discern resolvable detail and it represents the resolving power and precision of optical instruments which includes the eye. This angle is created at the eye or the lens and it is based on the diameter of an object and that object's distance from the observer or the device. This angle determines the size of the image that is projected onto the retina. So once an angle is small enough that it reaches the angular resolution limit, no image can be resolved on the retina and basically the object disappears. The formula to find the angular resolution of the human eye or any image forming device is the constant of 1.22 times the wavelength of light divided by the diameter of the lens aperture or entrance pupil. Once you figure out the angular resolution of, say, the human eye, you can then determine how large or how far away an object must be for you to be able to resolve it. In other words, for you to be able to see it. This is the limit of eyesight, or the resolving power of a telescope, camera, or microscope. Anything beyond this limit cannot be seen. A shorter distance and larger diameter of an object equal a larger angle at your eye, thus easy to resolve. A longer distance and smaller diameter of an object equal a smaller angle, 
thus difficult for your eye to resolve. The size of the angle is also what gives us perspective. Objects do not physically shrink in size as they move away from us, but the angle in our eye gets smaller and smaller, which is what allows us to determine that it is moving further and further away. For objects coming toward us, the angle will get larger and the object will appear to be larger on the retina. This is an important part of perspective. This is how we distinguish objects moving away versus coming toward us. The angles also help us determine the size or distance of any given object. Visual acuity is another closely related term that means clarity of vision or the limit of one's eyesight and it is a measurement of the angular resolution of the eye or the device. The generally accepted value for the angular resolution limit or visual acuity of the human eye is about one arc minute, which equals 0 0.02 degree. This means that at a distance of one kilometer, the human eye can resolve an object that is about 30 to 60 centimeters in diameter. Beyond this, the angle formed in the observer's eye gets smaller than one arc minute and the object will blur and then finally disappear altogether. And here is another quick explanation of angular resolution by MIT professor Dr. Walter Lewin. So in the remaining five minutes I want to address the issue of the angular resolution of your own eye. You can now calculate what the ultimate angular resolution is of your own eye because you can estimate what the diameter is of the pupil, the opening of your eye. Three millimeters, maybe five millimeters, a little bit larger at night when it is dark. Pupil opens up, but we can calculate what this is. Uh, if I take four millimeters, so I put in for A four millimeters, and if I take lambda 5,000 angstroms, it's not an unreasonable value, then I find that the best angular resolution of a human eye is half an arc minute. Can not be any better. Because there's no way around it. You're always stuck with the diffraction limitation. I think, though, that most of you will not be able to see with an angular resolution of one half arc minute. Most of you are probably in the domain of one arc minute. It's a little larger than diffraction limited, but it's very close to that. That is 30 arc seconds. That is 600 times worse than Hubble Space Telescope. When you think of diffraction, it's really an incredibly fascinating thing. Because what does diffraction actually means? That it is a limitation that is put upon us, on everyone, also God. No one can bypass diffraction. No matter how hard we try, we can never undo our chains and handcuffs that are imposed upon us by diffraction. And he's definitely not a flat earther. He obviously believes in the Hubble telescope. The main reason I want to introduce these concepts is to demonstrate with logic that there are scientifically proven and verifiable factors that determine how far we can see with our own eyes and with telescopes. Angular resolution equations are used by NASA, astronomers, and scientists to determine the resolving power of the human eye, cameras, microscopes, and telescopes including the Hubble Space Telescope. So when people say, if the Earth was flat, then we should be able to see Europe across the ocean. There are scientifically proven laws of light, diffraction, resolution, and perspective that render this statement foolish. Due to the resolving power of our eyes and even the most powerful telescopes, we could never possibly see across an ocean that is thousands of miles in distance. It is impossible due to the laws of physics, due to the physics of the angles, not to mention the additional limitations of diffraction. Again, it is a silly statement that we should be able to see across the ocean if the Earth were flat. However, the mistaken or disingenuous conclusion put forth by the so-called scientific community in spite of these scientifically proven and accepted limitations on light propagation and resolution is that the reason we can't see across the ocean is because we live on a spinning ball. Do you see the trick that they are playing? It is like telling little children that a guy on a sleigh in the North Pole brings them presents on Christmas. 
It sounds outlandish even to children, but they don't know any better and they don't actually see the parents leaving the presence and they are given this story by the authority, so they believe it. In our case, we have a knowledge gap, an unknown, because we can't see across the ocean, or we see ships and buildings disappear bottom first as they get further away, so we look to supposedly qualified authorities to study these issues for us and provide reliable explanations. For hundreds of years, the scientific authorities, now the space agencies, have both knowingly and unknowingly filled this gap with their own cleverly constructed explanations, and most people just accept their models without researching or using reason and logic. If people did think about the issues critically and logically, they would see that the authority is giving us beautifully wrapped presents and putting out cookies for their fictional Santa Claus. In this case, a spinning ball Earth. One way they fill this gap is to use the angular distance of a sky object to invent their model. The angular diameter, or apparent size, is an angular measurement describing how large an object appears from a given point of view. For example, this involves looking at the sky and determining that the sun and moon have an angular diameter of about 31 or 32 arc minutes, which equals a half of a degree. So this is the angle created in our eye or in a telescope, which means that the sun and the moon can be around 31 miles in diameter and 3,500 miles up, or, as the authorities claim, the moon can be 2,159 miles in diameter and 237,000 miles away. And they claim the sun is 864,575 miles in diameter and 93 million miles away. You see, both measurements are correct based on the angle we see from Earth. Knowing the angular diameter or apparent size of a celestial body we can easily invent a model using trigonometry. We could say the sun is 500 miles in diameter and 57,000 miles away, or maybe it is only 5 miles in diameter and 500 miles up. Or, if we wanted to get really crazy, we could invent a sun that is 2 million miles in diameter and 229 million miles away. Of course, if we did that, we would then have to adjust all of the diameters and orbital speeds of the planets and distances, but this should give you an idea of how they have constructed their model, because they are all built on apparent sizes, the angular diameter of lights in the sky visible from Earth. So, relationally, the math works out. They then construct their universe model around these angles filling in and changing the numbers as needed to fit their assumptions. This is why the spins and orbits are so ridiculous, yet mathematically they work out because it's all based on the angles. And this is also the reason why they changed the distance of the sun over the years to fit their model. This assertion of boats going over the edge of a ball earth is silly. Check out this footage from a channel called Wide Awake. This guy filmed some great sky and horizon shots showing that objects can be brought back into view and more importantly, his shots also demonstrate diffraction and the resolution limit of these objects at those distances and at those angles. As you can see in his footage, the boats, once they are close enough to resolve, appear like little smudges and they also appear to be floating above the horizon. The boats are not mirages floating in the air, although there is an inferior mirage that appears inverted below the actual boats in his footage. To prove this, he actually tracks them all the way in, and the closer a boat gets, the more resolved it becomes, and the more detail you can see. This is a perfect illustration of visual acuity and the angular resolution of the camera which is obviously better than our eyes, but the principle is the same. And again, if you increase your altitude, say to the top of a hotel or in an airplane or on a mountain, 
You create better angles and you can of course see further, but even there you will eventually reach a resolution limit. It is unavoidable, but it is not an edge that Santa Claus is falling over. Look at the water in his shots. Some would call the resolved water line the horizon, but you can clearly see boats fully in the water beyond the resolved water line. You can even barely make out the water being sprayed up from the motor. The surface of the water extends beyond the resolved water line, but it is too far and at too sharp of an angle for the camera or your eye to completely resolve. There is also a lot of diffraction going on due to this angle and the light or atmospheric conditions. Therefore, you get a blurred section that reflects the sky and the boat as an inferior mirage. Again, this happens beyond a point where the eye or camera can no longer clearly resolve the water due to the angle and diffraction. It is where your eye or camera can no longer distinguish points of light. The image blurs and turns into a mirror under certain conditions. Look at the shimmering and changing edges of the top of the waterline as the camera resolves it at its maximum distance. Beyond this distance, the water is at too small of an angle to resolve any detail. At this point, it does exactly what a road will do on a hot day. It reflects the light waves like a mirror because the eye or camera can more easily resolve these reflected light rays than they can the actual surface of the road or water. On the ground or on the water, you can see the inferior mirage or reflection of the boats and cars. Some people will claim that the boat itself is a superior mirage and that the actual boat is over the edge of a ball. This is silly for two reasons. Number one, a superior mirage is inverted. And number two, in this footage, he tracks these boats the entire way in so you can verify with your own eyes how a boat will barely come into view as a small blur and then as it gets closer and closer the angles get larger and your eye can then resolve more and more detail. This is observable, repeatable, apparent and can be verified by anyone unlike NASA's theories of course that nobody can verify unless they can build a little rocket ship. Finally, I would like to discuss the issue of boats or buildings being cut off by the horizon line over water, which many people falsely attribute to the object being over the edge of a ball earth. Again, I would start by saying that it is easy to debunk this simply by increasing your altitude. If there were a massive drop in curvature obscuring the boat or building, this would be apparent from higher up. Our eyes are not that bad, we can clearly distinguish slopes and hills in the distance, and when you increase your altitude, you can clearly see that the target object lies on the same flat plane as the original observation point. This is simply a function of perspective, angular resolution, and diffraction. When you stand on the seashore, you can see a horizon line which is basically the limit of your ability to resolve the water because at a certain distance the angle becomes too small and diffraction also plays a part. Above this waterline horizon will be everything that your eye can resolve above your eye level. For example, from the beach I can see about three to four miles of the water surface which in my field of view extends from my feet up to my eye level and it represents my horizon and the limit of my sight up to my eye level. Now there are hotels located about 18 miles away in this picture and these hotels are above my horizon line yet appear to be cut off by the horizon. Not because they are over the edge of a ball, this is simply the point where they fit in due to perspective where objects that are closer are in front of objects that are further away which is also a function of diffraction and angular resolution. I cannot resolve the hotels any lower because the angle is too small. If I could resolve the hotels lower, then logically I would be able to resolve more of the surface of the water at a greater distance. 
but we know this is not possible due to the laws of physics. However, if I were to go up in an airplane, I would be able to see the entire distance from the beach to the hotel, and I could also see that it is flat as a pancake. The hotel is not obscured by the edge of a magic ball. It is simply perspective and angle of view. The limit of what I can see above and below my eye level converge at what we call the horizon line or vanishing point. So check out this little experiment I did. In order to simulate the size and distance of that hotel, I took a small glass bottle and put it on the road and then filmed from ground level. Now the hotel is about 18 stories, which equals about 180 to 200 feet. I used 250 feet just to be conservative and to give it some room above the actual water line. And the distance is 17.5 miles. The glass bottle is three and a half inches, so that meant that I would have to put it at a distance of about 107 feet to get the same ratio. Now, when I started filming, I was standing up and I could zoom in on the bottle, the entire bottle, top to bottom, and then I, I pan out, I take the camera and I place it on the ground, and even on the ground it's actually conservative because the lens of the camera is still about an inch to an inch and a half above the ground, so this is a conservative experiment, and when I zoom in you can see now that the angle of resolution is just too small. Um, and combined with the diffraction, you cannot make out the bottom of the bottle. It disappears. It is cut off. And that is exactly what you're seeing in those um, pictures and videos where buildings or boats are cut off at the bottom. Your eye cannot resolve the detail of the surface of the ground or the bottom of that bottle. It's just too sharp of an angle. And you can even actually see beyond the bottle where the road is, again, the same color because your eye can resolve that a little bit better because it, it makes a curve and it's a little bit, the angle is a little bit better on the road beyond where the bottle is. So that's a pretty interesting little experiment and shows you the effect of diffraction and angular resolution. And again, even on the ground, the lens of the camera is about an inch or an inch and a half off the ground which when you compare that to the bottle, that is almost half of the bottle. So that would probably equal an observer that is about 100 or 150 feet in the air filming the hotel in New Smyrna. So if I was actually on the ground with the camera, I'm sure that the diffraction would probably cover almost the entire bottle, if not half the bottle, and it would look exactly like the water line covering these hotels or these boats. But you can see the principle it's verifiable and it's repeatable, so it's an explanation. We don't have to use the Santa Claus falling over the edge of a ball to explain what we see. If I'm standing on the beach at sea level, then obviously my field of view from my feet to the horizon will be much shorter due to the angle. Again, about three miles from the beach is approximately the limit for a six foot tall individual. Yet the distance of my field of view above the horizon will be much greater due to the angles. Therefore I can see most of a hotel 18 miles away, but again not the bottom of the hotel due to the angular resolution and the angle of perspective. The same principle applies to a sunset or a sunrise. The waterline horizon at the beach is about 3 to 4 miles out. Yet the sun is thousands of miles out when it disappears due to the limit of angular resolution and light propagation. We can see the sun at a much further distance because it is so large and high in the sky. But just like anything else, once it gets far enough away from the observer, the angle becomes so small that it will disappear, the furthest edge first, appearing to go down behind the water. This is what you would expect to see based on perspective. Something closer will appear in front of something farther away. This does not mean it is due to a spinning ball earth. It simply vanishes at the waterline horizon due to perspective. Even the sun is subject to the laws of perspective, angular resolution, and diffraction. With a sunrise, it is the opposite. We see the top of the sun first because it is approaching us Therefore, the side that is coming toward us is the first section of the sun to come into our field of view 
due to angular resolution. And again, due to the laws of perspective, the sun will always appear to be behind the much closer waterline. Some will say that it is due to the spin of the ball that you live on, but I think perspective makes more sense, and the sun is simply coming into our field of view due to, again, angular resolution. The problem that truth seekers or flat earthers face when trying to expose lies and deceptions is that most people put their own brains on sleep mode and they put their trust in the so-called scientific authorities to investigate and explain the reasons for phenomena that we observe from Earth. This is not to say that the scientific community is purposely promoting an incorrect model. What is happening is that everyone is so specialized that they only see a small portion of the big picture. We are basically compartmentalized due to the level of sophistication of technology and our economy. People are also conditioned from kindergarten and throughout school to conform, to obey, and repeat government-sanctioned science. People are conditioned to treat any questioning of the spinning ball Earth as idiotic and primitive. If you mention flat Earth, the reaction is guaranteed to be ridicule laughter, or even anger at the stupidity of such a statement. No one likes to be wrong, and no one likes to be ridiculed, so there's not much straying from the herd in today's world. I personally believe there's a lot of compelling evidence that calls into question the scientifically accepted model brought to us by the politically created agency of NASA. If everything is exactly how space agencies and government scientists tell us, then we are going to need much more and reliable proof other than CGI images and silly old stories. It is amazing how academia conveniently forgets the debates that used to rage about the rotundity of the earth, and not by idiots, by learned men and women. So in closing, I just want to reiterate that there are other alternatives to the theories that were taught to us as fact by space agencies and the political scientific authorities. There are logical and scientifically accepted laws of physics such as angular resolution, diffraction, and perspective which can be applied in this pursuit. You don't need to be a math genius or have a PhD in physics to understand that there are physical limitations on our ability to see, even with telescopes and cameras. We need to have faith in our own ability to think and use logic and reason. Otherwise, there are many opportunistic groups of individuals who will step in and do the thinking for us. And these groups may not always have our best interests at heart. In fact, they will take advantage and control those who cannot or will not think for themselves. This, I believe, is the modern day manifestation of slavery, where most people no longer think like humans, they simply repeat and react.